Okay, there's a lamp, and these are lamps. And I really should write down these symbols and write down their numbers. Um, like, th there are cue balls you can see um, upstairs in a little bit. Like, uh, there's a pool. Ri oh, no, I better not be hit because Chris is so fucking slow at. Okay. Good. Alright. <clears throat> there's a pool table upstairs in this area. And on that pool table, there are a bunch of. Uh, just. Uh, cue balls that are, uh, that each of which have a number on them. For the number that's on these lamps, there is a number on those balls. And, uh, you have to associate the symbols uh, with the colors and the numbers. So another box of mixed herbs here. And here's another lamp. Ah, uh, I'm probably just gonna figure it out online. Which is a really, really stupid idea from this position. I probably shouldn't be showing that on camera. Or, or I guess screen. Ass. And there's the cue ball. And there's the pool table. There's nothing around here. Besides what I just found. And oh. Glitch! Uh, yeah. Yeah, the only thing of importance that was in that room was that book. Uh, hold on. Yeah, it's a book with a red cover. So yeah. We will need it, but not quite right now. <clears throat> it's actually one of the last items we're going to use in this area, so... Another case of something you can get, and you have no idea where you're going to need it, and if you don't have it when you need it, it's going to require a lot of backtracking. Uh... I put the shells away, put this away, even put this up. Well, should I? Yeah, I just circumvented a bunch of spiders, and that's what those things are for. Alright. <clears throat> so now, we're uh, gonna move on to the area where we're gonna get our first key item. And in order to do that, we got. Well, we can do this uh, without pushing this block into a certain locale. And, oh, fuck. Uh, but we're gonna be taking a lot of damage if we don't do that. If I don't do this. Uh, no, stop pushing the block, Chris. Alright. You see a bunch of holes in the ground. Uh, the thing is, if you do not plug, uh, all these holes, they, there are a bunch of, uh, they're like plants that'll come out and grab you. And this is like the w only way you can make sure that in both... Uh, directions, you don't get hit. Yeah, and as you can tell, this, comparatively to the other place, uh, this is actually a bit barren. And there is something that, on the, on that left side that I didn't go to. But, there I'll go later. Whoa. Ah, Plant 42 report. Four days have passed since the incident. The plant at Point 42 is growing at an amazing rate. Although there are many kind, many unknown aspects about this plant, we, we know that in comparison to other groups of plants, the T-virus has had a substantially stronger effect on this one. The T-virus has drastically morphed its host's uh, anatomy as well as its size. Looking at its current state, it's difficult to imagine its original appearance. Nowhere on Earth will you find anything like this. We've also found that Plant 42 has two main sources of acquiring its necessary nutrients. One source was through its roots. Somehow, it's rooted itself into the basement. Immediately after the incident, a scientist went mad and destroyed the aqua ring. Ever since, the basement has been like a pool. There is a high possibility that one of it, one of the chemicals in the water that's promoting the plant 42's rapid growth. <clears throat> However, we have yet to determine the site of the specific chemical. The bulb-like body of the plant 42 has been sighted hanging from the ceiling on the first floor. We're sure that it used the air ducts to reach the first floor. Numerous long tentacle-like vines are protruding from the bulb. We believe that 
We believe the vines are the second means of acquiring nutrients. When Plant 42 senses prey, it uses its tentacle-like vines to capture prey. After doing so, suckers on the plant drain the prey of its blood. We've also noticed it has some intelligence. When it captures some, when it captures its prey, or when it's inactive, the vines twine up around the door to stop possible intruders. Unfortunately, a, a several of our scientists have already fallen victim to this Plant 42. When we heard the stories from the observer, from the survivors, they all observed one thing in common. The uniform petal-like flaps open to, and reveal its vital internals. It has a tendency to become more aggressive. Oh, when? One witness reported that it was as if it was trying to protect itself. Why it behaves the way it does is still unknown. May 21st, 1998, Henry Sartre. Man, that was like the longest one so far. God, I, I remember there was a key item. Oh, wait. Uh, I know there's... Oh, is he stuck? No, he's not. Okay, good. No crimson. Damn it. Where is that self-defense? Oh, it must be later. <clears throat> I'm sure you noticed those very loose brief case, uh, bookcases in the back. Um, it's a very bad idea to go in there now. Because if we do, then we'll have to... Then we'll be in a, in a place that requires a key. And not the key we just found. We just found a residence key. And in here says 001. Because I'm sure you noticed this whole roomish thing. Like, I guess it's a home, I, I, I think. It's uh well, this one, it's 002. The key itself, though, is for 001, which is basically right across from the save point we used early, I used earlier. Anyway, come in here, and we have a map of the residence. This is sort of self-implying that uh, this is where the the scientists live. There's a hole in the wall. I'm not going to check it until much later. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, self-implying that this is where the scientists live. And um, it, it looks way too small. It looks like there should be so many, so much more of these. Because there's no way like three people came up with all this. Anyway, come back across here, and, yep, the key for room 001. Discard the key. Maybe I should have healed. Come in here. Oh, gee, I wonder what's going to happen. Out of my way. Uh, let's see. Examine around, and I be believe we should find like something called a self defense gun. Yes, it is. Self defense gun. Suicide note. June 22nd, 1998. I had to do it. We ran from those things, helping each other out to survive. But Robert started showing symptoms. I had to do it. Those damn things are pure evil. There was no other way. He would have done it the same if it were the other way around. Now, after I put him out of his misery, I had to just leave him in the bathroom. Now, I'm probably the last one. How could this happen? I'll never forgive myself for being part of this project. Eventually, I'll get what's coming to me, though. There's no way to escape it from this nut house. It's just a matter of time. Everything is set. All I need is a little courage to get it done. Knowing that I'll leave many things undone is regret beyond words. But this is better than just waiting to turn into one of them. Please understand, and at least let me end my life as a person. There's a message on the back. Linda, please forgive me. And, ooh, handgun magazine which is kind of redundant with a self-defense gun. The self-defense gun is kind of a weird weapon. It's a self-defense gun that fires 22 magnum rounds. One round has already been fired. So yeah, it's basically its own weapon that has one bullet. 
you know, for, for something that weak, it really shouldn't... It really shouldn't be its own weapon. Yeah, th there's the dude the, the guy was mentioning. And, uh, let's see. Full of dirty water. Full of blood. Something down there, and it's the control room key. Alright. Uh, and that control room is actually, um, an area that we've previously... Well, we haven't been in there yet, but when I was referring to an area behind the bookcases, that is what it, I am referring to. There is a control room in what they earlier referred to as, I believe, the Aqua Ring. Uh... I'm gonna put this away because it's worthless. It, it honestly fires hard. Uh, the, the one shot it fires is not that great. Uh, but I, I think I will take shotgun shells now because um, we're gonna be fighting sharks, which is not as cool as it sounds. Uh, anyway, now we will return to room 002. And and this is um sort of a re sort of one of the things that does get on my nerve about this game that it can feel dreadfully slow at times. And normally, if you're gonna go like slow, you kind of have to feel very engrossing. Like a great example of being very slow, but also being very absorbing, is like uh, Red Dead Redemption. Well, uh, for a bit, I thought it was absorbing, but it, you know. It's a good example of how being slow can let you get engrossed in your environment. Um, uh, but the thing is, I, I kind of like the atmosphere of Resident Evil. Uh, this game... Uh, of, of this Resident Evil game. But at the same time, a lot of it feels kind of forced. I think enough, of all the tunes I've heard in this game... Uh, besides Moonlight Sonata, this is always the one that it instantly just hits you once you get once you get here. Moonlight Sonata, I'm not gonna count that as the best song because that's cheating. You know, the best original song in this game, I I'd say. This is actually a very good example of a. Uh, kind of tense song that makes you uh, wonder what's ahead. But this is, uh, this is stupid. I, uh, this section, I will say, is stupid. All you do is fucking push blocks. And I'm kind of worried about this next section, because I can't remember how to do it. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get killed, because, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're a lot more strict about the puzzles in hard mode. And also, there's in the next area, there's an instant kill enemy, and I can't remember how to dodge it. So yeah, that's our path. Apparently, Chris is so light in this that even his weight added to the very short uh, surface area of the boxes is still not enough to set him off. He's really lightweight. Uh, take... Mm. Oh wait, once we drain- uh, Oh, I probably shouldn't just talk about stuff in the future. Anyway, now we're getting flooded. Like in Mario 3. Ah, Super Mario Sunshine. Oh, who the hell was I talking about? Oh, by the way, remember Richard? Richard! Chris! Richard. <laughs> 